Hey guys, welcome to the photo department. I'm here in my bedroom where I always record these and I'm not drinking coffee. I have my Heath mug, but I'm drinking Georgia peach juice from Trader Joe's. I'm kind of taking a little bit of a break from the coffee shilling for a while. I've been a little bit burnt out in the coffee industry and yeah, it's a whole bunch of politics I don't really feel like getting into right now. Today I want to talk about something that's been discussed ad nauseum, but uh, basically in a more straightforward way. I want to talk about the 35mm f2 lens in comparison to the Fuji 35mm f1.4, which is a staple in the Fuji lineup and a favorite of many Fuji photographers. This video is not scientific in any way. I didn't do any side-by-side -side comparisons and I haven't done any MTF charts or sharpness or vignetting checks or any pixel peeping, anything like that at all. All I have done is shot both of these lenses in a practical real world shooting situation. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know I've had the 35mm f2 since before I got the X-Pro2. And this lens has practically lived on my X-E1 before that was stolen and the X-Pro2. I think this lens has been on this camera probably 90% of the time. I use it for most of the work that I do and it is actually the lens that I use the most for the bulk of my videos. So most of the photo department's videos that I've done have been shot with the 35. F2. So as most of you also know, the 35 millimeters on a crop frame sensor like the Fujifilm X-Pro2 or any of the other Fujifilm cameras is a 1.5 times crop. So that results in a 50 millimeter angle of view. What that means is the 35 millimeter 1.4 and F2 are both a normal telephoto lens. So this is going to give you the normal field of view like if you're using a 50 millimeter lens on any other type of camera. The 35 millimeter F1.4 was one of Fuji's first prime lenses. And since it has come out, it is pretty celebrated by most people who shoot Fujifilm cameras. When the 35 millimeter F2 came out in 2015, a lot of people were really excited about having a weather sealed normal lens with a decently wide aperture at F2. Honestly, the 1.4 is not that much bigger though it is bigger. If you have a weather sealed camera like the X-T1, X-T2, or X-Pro2, you can attach the 35 F2 and you're fully weather sealed. I've taken this camera out in rain, in mist, in fog, whatever, and I've never had an issue. I actually took the X-Pro2 and the 35 millimeter F2 to Ocean Beach a couple times and one time it was torrential rain. It was basically coming sideways and we were completely soaking wet through our clothes and there was not a single problem with the camera. So I think that's a testament to the versatility of this lens. I personally myself really love the way that the F2 looks when attached to the X-Pro2. I think that it makes a very compact kit. I think it makes it even more Leica-like, which is not something that I'm striving for, but I think it looks very handsome. It's really great for traveling. I can stuff it in one of my Ona bags or in a backpack or in a sling pack, whatever, and it's really small and it's not gonna take up too much space. Uh, it's also super lightweight. I used to travel with a Canon kit, and as much as I loved that kit, it was just too much weight. As far as sharpness goes, there's no way you could make any claims for either lens not being sharp enough. The 35 millimeter F1.4 has been known for its sharpness since it was released. The F2 is also right up there with the 1.4 as far as sharpness goes. And honestly, any modern production camera lens will be way sharper than you'll ever need. And if it's not, then there is a manufacturing defect. In fact, on the X-Pro2, in my settings, which I shoot for everything, I have the sharpness turned negative four because I find that the Fuji lenses, the 1855, the 3514, the 35 F2, any of the Fuji lenses I've ever used resolved so sharply that they're too sharp. It's just too perfect. So I back off the sharpness and then when I go into Lightroom or Photoshop, I back it off even more because I want it to be a little more natural looking and a little bit less perfect. The one thing that people say about the 35 F1 IV that they are missing with the F2 is that there's a specific kind of character that comes from that lens and I don't think that that's wrong. I think that that lens does have a very beautiful specific character. It does have a very specific look and it is very nice. 
I will say that the 35 F2 is about 95% there. I don't think that if you put the two next to each other, you're going to notice a huge difference. The biggest difference you're probably gonna notice is light fall off in the corners where the 35 F2 is pretty even all the way across the frame. The 1.4 does have a noticeable vignetting and uh, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing, but you can obviously fix that in post, but it's something to consider. In my experience, having shot with both of these lenses extensively, there's only a couple different things that I would point to as far as considerations. One would be size and weight. Obviously, if you're traveling a lot, it might be nicer to have the smaller lens, but its I don't think it's that big of a deal if you're carrying a whole camera kit anyway. But another thing is, depending on what you're going to be shooting, focus speed is a big deal. I didn't find that I had a huge problem with the focusing speed of the F1.4. I did miss shots. Uh, not a ton, but there were times where the focus just wasn't snappy enough and I wasn't able to capture exactly what I wanted at that time. If you're shooting in low light and what you need is really quick autofocus and you don't really need necessarily extra aperture stops, but maybe you can crank up the ISO, I would say the F2 is the winner. It just focuses faster in low light. There are two things that really tip the scales to the F2 for me when deciding which lens to keep. The first thing is the price. I can get an F2 35mm lens second hand from anywhere between $250 to $300, which is very, very cheap for a modern autofocus lens of this quality. Fujifilm's been making lenses forever for broadcast and film, and uh, they just know how to make lenses, and this is a professional, beautiful, highly capable lens. So being able to buy a lens like this at that price point is kind of insane. The 35F 1.4 you can find for around 350, 400 used, which is not bad either, but you're gonna save some money with this lens. And the final thing that made me really decide that the 35 F2 was for me was I really like to shoot subjects closer to the lens so that I can push the background out and kind of get more of a separation. Uh, I also just really like shooting up close. Um, I think it looks cool. And what I did notice was at the widest aperture 1.4, sometimes there would just be nothing in focus. And, you know, I would take multiple shots and I'd have the focus point right where I wanted it. And it's just like the smallest, tiniest little sliver of my subject in focus and everything else is out of focus. I don't know of a thing that I would be shooting that I would need that small of depth of field. I really like a shallow depth of field, but there is a such thing as too shallow. With the F2, I don't have that issue. Whatever I'm focusing on, it's getting enough of it in focus that it makes sense when I'm shooting and then the rest of the stuff is, is out of focus and it looks great. The out of focus backgrounds are almost identical, so I wouldn't say that either of them look better out of focus than the other one. But the ability to focus up close, get a good, intelligible, in focus image, and also be able to put the background out of focus at wide apertures is important. And I thought that with the 1.4, I just was not getting enough in focus. Your results may vary. Obviously, in these images I've shown you, um, it's pretty obvious, but. It just depends on the kind of photographer that you are. This is just my experience, and this is why I've landed on the F2. Does this mean that the F1.4 is bad? Absolutely not, that lens is phenomenal. Um, if I had the working capital, I would just have both lenses because I think that there are times where I wish I had that extra stop of light, or there are times where I wish I had that focus ring because the one on this is, it certainly works, but it's not, it's not great. It's not my favorite. The focus ring on the 1.4 is much better. That's my experience. Uh, the F2, I think, is one of their best lenses. It is highly versatile, really quick to focus, lightweight, tiny. And I think that all of the Fujicron line of lenses are really fantastic. I own the 23 F2, ended up get ridding, getting rid of it because I didn't really use it that often, not as much as the 35. I say that if you own a Fuji, camera, the 35 millimeter F2 is so inexpensive, it makes total sense just to have one. And um, I'll show you some more images from some work I've done with the 35 millimeter F2. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you follow me on Instagram, 
That'd be really cool. I like when people follow me because you guys are really interactive and talk to me all the time, which is neat. Also, if you've been following me on Instagram, you might have seen that I've started a new project called Reference Standard. And it's basically a study of some of my favorite products and designs that I think are really functional and super thoughtful in design. And I, I take some photographs of that product to kind of very elegantly highlight that product. And I'm going to be doing a series of products and some collaborations with some other creatives. And then I will be putting a book together that will be for sale at some point, probably early next year. So if you want to follow along to that project, it is at reference standard on Instagram. And I'm not updating that super often, but I will be periodically updating that when I choose new designs, or new products to highlight. It's just a fun little project to keep me on my toes and to kind of expand my creative horizons a little bit while I'm working on other stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode, whenever that is. And I love you and stay safe and cool and drink lots of water. Drink a lot of water. I have not been drinking enough water. What's my water? I got this big Yeti water bottle so I can drink more water. Mm. You guys should do that too. Make sure you drink water. It's super important. All right.